Do you pay particular attention to the way your hands move in and out of the piano, so forwards and backwards away from the full board? Well, I recently started paying a lot more attention to this, and I found that it does help fix lots of technical problems. Stay tuned and let me explain how. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anybody who loves piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip, then please do think about subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. I discovered recently that I've probably been largely ignoring thinking about how my hands move backwards and forwards on piano towards and away from the fallboard when I'm playing. Of course we think a lot about moving up and down the instrument and doing jumps and this kind of thing. We think about our hands going up and down because of course we don't simply use our fingers to play. And I think to an extent we all have to go towards and away from the fallboard at some point simply because of the fact that the black keys are shorter and higher than the white keys. However, I never really paid very much attention to it. And I discovered that in fact that was causing me some technical problems. This forward and backward or in and out movement is, as I said, something that we all do and probably to a greater or lesser extent in a very intuitive way. Clearly, because the uh, black keys are shorter and higher than the white keys, then even though our fingers two, three and four are that little bit longer than the thumb and the pinky in general, we'll still need to move closer to the full board to get our fingers over the keys in a comfortable way. Similarly, when we want to go back to the white keys, of course, we'll want to pull our hand back towards our body, otherwise we'd end up with our other fingers needing to try and play the white notes from that thin section between the two black keys, which is not ideal. However, have you ever noticed that with top flight concert pianists, especially when they're playing white keys with fingers two, three and four, quite often their hand will be so far back that the thumb is completely off the keyboard altogether. I mean, this is something I'd seen hundreds of times, but never really thought about it so much. It wasn't until I saw that video that Josh Wright released where he interviewed Dr. Robert Durso, one of the teachers of the Talman technique, and he mentioned this during the video. In fact, what he said was that one of Dorothy Taubman's first discoveries related really to the way child prodigies managed to play things at piano. She found that they were making intuitive ways of moving at the instrument that enabled them to play music that was far beyond what they should have been able to play given their age, given the fact that normally this would take a lot of instruction and you know years of practice, yet clearly they were too young to have been able to put in that much time. One of the movements Dr. Dursol specifically referred to were this in and out movement. And he said that in general, when fingers two, three and four are playing white keys, then the most natural position for the hand is in fact for it to be closer to the body or further away from the fallboard so that the thumb is not even over the keyboard at all and hangs off. This was the point at which I actually started to join the dots in my head. I realized that when I was playing anything that was at a pace other than, you know, moderately slow, my right hand was quite error prone when finger two was due to play a black note. After a little bit of experimentation, I came to the conclusion that it was largely because my hands were too far away from the fallboard when this happened. And the reason I mention speed here is that when you're playing something slowly, to be able to stretch your finger out a little bit to hit that key is not so difficult, but as you start to speed things up, it's too easy to forget that little extra stretching movement, and of course then to miss the note altogether. Equally, I started to notice that with my pinky especially, I would start to actually make mistakes on white notes when that white note immediately followed a black note played by another finger. 
And I worked out that this was largely because I was not moving my hand away from the fallboard at all and therefore my pinky was having to hit that thinner section of the key rather than the bigger target that's just below it. For me, this means now that I've needed to start trying to relearn certain elements of technique by paying specific attention to this phenomenon. So for example, if I start to notice an error prone passage, one of the things that I look for when I'm trying to work out why I keep making the error is the position of my hand over the keys and the combination of keys that I'm trying to play. I'll then consider whether or not I need to make some tiny adjustments to the position of my hand with respect to the keyboard as I'm learning something. Of course, when we watch top flight pianists, they're constantly making tiny, tiny adjustments to their hands as they play. And of course, for them, it's probably 100% subconscious now. And for the rest of us, maybe this is something that we need to consciously learn to do as we learn our pieces. Sometimes being even just half a centimetre closer to the fallboard as we speed something up will make all the difference between getting it right and of course getting it wrong. I've equally found when I'm playing on the white keys, especially doing things like trills or mordants, it's quite often better if my thumb is off the keyboard, I can get a crisper and clearer sound when I'm playing these. Of course I found this to be a painstaking process I'm trying to relearn and make myself introduce a completely new movement to the way I play in some pieces. And of course, the best way to start doing this is to start off extremely slowly. This then gives our brain more time to get used to the idea that it needs to make our hand move this fraction of a centimeter sometimes as it plays certain passages. Naturally, at some point, we'll need to build some speed as well. And I found that generally the way to do this is to isolate small sections and then add notes before and after to elongate those sections as I play them up to speed. Finally, I did notice that we need to pay particular attention when we're putting something hands together, especially when we've been working on it hands separately. Because we're trying to introduce a new movement into our playing, quite often our brain will just reverse to type for one of a better expression when we put hands together and go back to its old habits. And again here, starting off nice and slowly and very consciously making these movements as we're playing is the way to go. It's only after all of this slow and painstaking work will this movement start to become subconscious. If you are finding issues with some of your pieces, then have a think about this. Have a think about whether it could be caused by the fact that you're going between black and white notes, or even you're going between different white notes between your thumb and fingers. To help work it out even better, you could even perhaps record yourself playing at 60 frames per second. Most phones will do it now easily enough. And then when you play it back, slow it down to 30 frames per second. And of course, it's half speed, so it's a lot easier to work out what your hands are actually doing. In this way, you're then able to think about how to better choreograph your hands to fix any issues that you're having. Let me know how you get on. If you're not already, of course, please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click on that little bell icon also, so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week.